Hello and welcome to News Click. We have with us our editor in chief Prabir Purkaista, who has also been member of various committees of Department of Electronics, and we are going to discuss with him the recent controversy regarding EVMs. So, my first question to you is uh, about the electronic uh, voting machines and the controversy uh, regarding them. How serious are these doubts? You know. Let's put it this way, every electronic voting machine in the world is theoretically possible to hack. You can change the program by either software or by replacing the hardware. The Indian electronic voting machines are essentially hardware programs, means that whatever the software is, has been burnt into the machine itself in terms of chips, e-prompts, whatever we want to call them. So that if they have to be changed, the programming has to be changed, you have to replace the hardware itself. So that's one difference between the Indian electronic voting machines, which are really in some sense calculators or like calculators, than any other voting machines in the world where they have tended to be either based on operating systems of some kind or they are basically also IP connected. IP connected means they are connected to the internet in some way or the other. Both these, having an operating system or having internet connectivity, means it's possible to hack them in externally. So the Indian voting machines in that sense cannot be hacked without actually changing the hardware itself. Now, theoretically again, it's possible to change the hardware for sure. Of course, you can make something which looks exactly the same, have one-to-one -one matching of the pins if you have the machine. So you can design it so that you can change the chips. And then there are two things. One is the program itself has changed. So this is now the hardware is behaving differently than what it was to behave. And it's also possible theoretically to add something to it by which from outside you can actually change what's happening inside. These are all theoretically possible. The real issue is, is it possible to do it if we take the voting machine and the procedures and the fact the political parties, the election agents are all involved in the process. So we don't, we don't have to see the election, electro, electronic voting machine in isolation, but you have to see a part of the overall system in which there are human beings. The only way this is possible to me, according to me, is if both the political parties and the election commission work together in order to hack the machines, which means the opposition political parties or at least their agents have to consent in order for such a hacking to succeed. So um, many countries still use paper ballots because they have concerns about electronic voting machines. How different is the mechanism of Indian EVMs? Well, let's put it this way, electronic voting machines in most countries were based on, as I said earlier, an operating system or, and or were connected to the internet uh, directly. Both these are open to hacking in different ways. Let's take, for instance, what the operating system issue is. We now know that the CIA has back doors or has been able to penetrate all the operating systems, including Linux, which we thought were relatively more secure. WikiLeaks latest uh, pub, uh, uh, disclosures also show that even the Android operating system or Linux, which is the operating system which is relatively, we thought, hack-proof, has also been hacked and CI is able to access all of them. Therefore, it's possible to subvert whatever protection you built over the operating system and directly change certain things because you have access to the operating system itself. So that's the core of the machine. The reason that most of the countries in the world went for these systems is that they did not want to invest in trying to build a dedicated system just for elections. Most of them were either smaller, they did not have the uh, infrastructure, they didn't want to do it, whatever may be the reason. So therefore, they use an existing hardware and try to build an EVM around it, making it relatively much more insecure because these machines are therefore known, the software is known, at least the operating system layer is known, and therefore they're much relatively much more easy to hack. The argument about the Indian EVMs have been that though it's much more difficult to hack it in this way, by changing the hardware it's easier to hack because there is no protection at that level, which is correct and I don't disagree with that. Regarding paper trail, of course, paper ballots also can be similarly hacked. You can 
change the ballot itself, that you can uh, rig the stamping of the ballots. So no system by themselves are foolproof, okay? What you really have is the human beings which have to be taken into consideration with the system, put together, whether that system can or cannot be hacked. So the argument why others did not use the Indian kind of EVMs is also because the cost of doing it for them would be much higher. In India, we had the, uh, the Electronics Corporation of India Limited, ECIL, we had Bharat Electronics Limited, a defense uh, undertaking, public sector, which invested in building this capability and supplying, as we said, 1.3 million of them. And in India, the cost of such machines are not very high. So therefore, it was easier for us to do it. It would not be easy for others to duplicate it because they don't have that infrastructure and the cost for them for doing it any other way would be relatively higher. So that is one of the issues why they did not go the Indian route and why their machines therefore were relatively less uh, secure. The last point is, you know, that if you look at what we have done, it is interesting to see that political parties which have lost, which have included the BJP earlier, have complained about, some of them have complained about uh, EVMs not being secured. Subramanian Swami went up to the uh, Supreme Court to say EVMs are not secure and so on. So now some additional features have been added, which will really come into operation in 2019. They're only available only in sample systems at the moment. Only a sprinkling of them have been put into operation. What's called a VVPAT. There is a voter verification unit, which has been added with the EVM, by which there is, you can see whom you have voted. There's a paper that comes out, which is behind a glass, and that goes into a box into a pouch which is sealed subsequently by the returning officer as well as the other people signing on it. So that there is, in case of a challenge, it can be verified with actually the paper ballots. So can you briefly tell us about the process, how EVMs are distributed to different constituency and is it possible in this process that they can be tampered with or they can be hacked? Well, that's the whole issue that, you know, suppose I change the program by changing the hardware itself, by making it some similar hardware, making it look the same and I change it. The question that happens is, I do not know which constituency it will go to. So I also have to therefore either know the constituency or after having tampered with it, ensure that it goes to the constituency I want. Because in every constituency, the one, two, three, fours do not belong to the same parties. Depending on the kind of names that they have, they could be in different positions. So because the number is what is hardware programmed, not the party, therefore it's a number which I have to know per constituency. So election commission calls for a whole bunch of people to be involved with it, political parties primarily, who are involved in a one first randomization, which is to, to work out which EVM will go where, okay? This is done in front of the political parties and there's a randomization process, there is an identification which will go where, after which those machines go to those constituencies. So it's very difficult to decide a priori that this machine will go to this constituency and that machine will go to that constituency. This is the first level of protection that exists. Then the second part of it is the election, the, uh, ele the, the p returning, the basically the polling agents of the parties who are there, they all have signed into it. There is a second level of uh, a, a process that takes place where each booth allocation in a constituency is also randomized. So that means that the connivance at the level of the machine and the polling officers becomes a little more difficult because you do not know which machine will go to which polling booth. So that's the second level of randomization that's carried out. Again, the presence of the political parties. The third thing is really that if you want to do this, that you want to change after the election has been done, then you really have to subvert the polling uh, agents of the political parties as well as the counting agents of the political parties because they will check whether the seals are intact, the seals have been broken and so on. So those are going to be also difficult to do. My last question is how can these EVMs be improved? How can we improve their mechanism? And uh, since the Supreme Court has asked EC to keep a paper, paper trail of uh, EVMs as well, so do you think that's necessary? Well, I will say that 
question finally is what's the credibility of the election process? And that's much more important than whether it really can or cannot be hacked. If the people believe there is a possibility of it being hacked, by all means a paper trail can be provided. And the cost of it is 20,000 per machine. But don't forget, this has to be amortized over a number of elections. So if you take 15 years as the life of a, say, a VVPAT as it is being has it been named, which keeps the paper trail, then that's not a high cost if it says sees five elections. In India, the same machine is used for state assembly elections, it's used for parliament election, it's also being used for local government elections. So the number of election cycle that a machine sees is quite high. So I think that's amortized over an election is adding say two to three thousand rupees per election to the cost of keeping a paper trail. As I said, given the sanctity of the electoral process, which must really be maintained. I think not a very high cost to pay. Can it be improved? Yes, it can be improved in terms of making it more easy, making the cost lower, making the functioning of the machine simpler, and so on, for the, for the voter. So the real issue is how can it be made simpler for the voter? There are all kinds of talks about how to introduce biometrics into the system and so on, which I believe will only complicate the process and will defeat the purpose of the elections because it will actually make the process of giving the vote more difficult. Some people may not have fingerprints and they will say, I had iris scanners. I think that's not the way to go. The Whatever has been the paper system, when the elect part of it is put under electronics, the rest of the system remains as is. I think it's relatively more credible as an election system rather than complicated by adding more electronics to the system. So I think the system can be improved, sure, but the improvements have to be incremental and should not violate the fundamental way the EVMs have been designed and the electoral process has been designed because without that we lose the credibility of the elections. Thank you so much.